And then, of course, along our, our waterways, along the, you've seen the little creeks and rivers uh, that empty into the, the Great Lakes. And um, from a recreational standpoint, it certainly is impacting how humans can get to the edges of fish or, or go see the lake or access the lake. But from a habitat perspective, this is really interfering with that edge habitat where uh, frogs and turtles and snakes and, and birds used to be able to uh, move easily from the, the open water up into the, the uh, coastal uh, habitat areas. And this is blocking their movement. And then, of course, along the beaches. This, this photo is from a long point. I mean, it's, it's pretty much, you know, there's too many beaches you go down a long point. But, um, the issue for, uh, for, from my perspective on, on these very sensitive uh, beach systems is, again, you're reducing your vegetation diversity, you're reducing the habitat for species at risk. Uh, there's been a lot of work on this um, with Dr. Bern Blossie down at Cornell University, and I actually have a a call on one day to, to discuss how things are progressing, but basically we're years off on getting anything close to um, uh, biological control. There were, I don't know if you're aware, but for the purple loose drive, that's pretty much how they manage that, was like those, uh, those beetles. So uh, from uh, work in the United States, uh, they have a product called Rodeo. Uh, we have a product here in, in Ontario, uh, Roundup. Uh, both of them have a the active ingredient glyphosate, and that's what kills the plant. Uh, in the United States, they also have another product they use to control fragrant mites. It's called Habitat, really nice, friendly name. Um, the active ingredient is a mazapur. We actually have uh, um, herbicides here in Ontario with a mazapur in it, and they're called Arsenal and Pursuit, and they're strictly for the agricultural <laughs> um, um, business to control weeds in the corn crops and that, so um, we don't have anything similar to that. Uh, method of control, spraying, injecting, and hand waking out. Um, we don't have that in our bodies. We produce our amino acids a very different way. And same with all other animals. So in, in other words, this glyphosate can't hurt me, it can't hurt animals. So actually, I'll just go back. So, so here's here's the issue. Uh, as you probably know, fried money does grow in wet areas. So how are we going to be able to control it in wet areas if we can't use a chemical? So uh, our, our options are quite limited. And so one of the rules, that, and I think I'll you speak to this, is to try and get over water a product that we can safely apply over water and from the air. And, uh, and I'll speak about why I think that that's an absolute, absolute bit of necessity. So it's impacting these very, very crucial habitat areas. Um, and I mentioned that our ability to control the fragmentes in, in some of these areas, we're, we're really working on our hands tied. We can't access these coastal areas from the ground. They're in water. And so right now, the plant is being left on check. I, I, I've been working on the uh, one point area, like here this, this year, and way, way, way out of the point, just fret righties, fret righties, and we can't get to it, can't think about it. So there we have our lovely fret righties growing out over the water's edge, and this is down in Long Point. I, I talked about those morphological uh, characters, it's a kind of um, get a little bit indistinct, and if you look close, you'll see a lot of these sheets. They're kind of reddish and smooth, but that's the invasive. And it's an amazing plant, really. You have to have a lot of respect for this plant. Its will to live is quite high. So as the water level increases, it just keeps sending out more roots. So, it can, so this is if you're looking down the water column. The water's about a meter deep, and you can see all the way down that water column on that stalk, the roots are emerging out. Uh, and, then, and then, as you saw in the previous slide, it can just keep sneaking it across the water. Oh, there we go. So, uh, as, as a result of the, the assessment work in Rondo, where I said, you know, we went in and just found these dead zones, I thought, you know what, we have to do something. Let's try, let's try and find a way that we can start controlling this plant until we get some legal uh, changes for um, overwater application winter. So, one thing I want to do so, because I mentioned Roundup kills all plants, and we're working in sensitive habitats, and on the edges of the fragmites, you have your native plants there. There's a 
a little bit of a, a gradient for your information. This is really key, and particularly if you're using a chemical. As I said, when I first uh, got it, I was really feasible using Roundup, but uh, I'm very comfortable with it. It's just getting the message of letting other people know it, it's okay. And not only that, but if we don't, we're, we're basically going to lose what we're trying to protect. We really will. So, um, in order to get the message out, and uh, you guys, this, is a, this meeting today is fantastic. It's step and mentors. Get people educated about the planet so they don't go pick it, think it's a pretty uh, grass and move it from one place to another. They don't plant it in their backyard. That they understand why we need to control it and, and are on board with that. And also, it really helps if you've got um, local groups such as yourself that really care about the system and want to work to protect it. That goes a long way because you force your local uh, government agencies to try and, and do something as well. Um, as I said this morning, governments tend to be uh, reactive, not proactive for some reason. So it's a good way to get them active. Signage is key. Um, the uh, soggy shores. Is it soggy? Yeah. Jefferson Hall for that. They have a really good model for that. And Bill Jones with the municipality there gave a great talk in the, in the spring and workshop that Lake Huron Center um, sponsored. And they were, they put notices up in the newspaper, they had radio information, they had flyers, and they have the spring, they had people on the beach to hand out flyers and talk to people about what they were doing and why they were doing it. And it was really well done. And I think that's really important as well. Okay, so the answer's no. <laughs> <laughs> Recommended next steps. Um, I mentioned we really have to try and get over water approval and aerial application approval. The forestry sector gets it. Somebody there must know how to do this. Uh, Akahi uh, is our, our provincial freight money's coordinator, and she's working with other agencies and other groups to try and forward these, push these uh, needs through. Um, she's going to speak a little bit more about that. Um, the other thing is, um, money to control for monkeys. Where does the money come from? We don't have really a pocket money. Every year I put in for our, provincial, our federal funding uh, from our basic um, program, species program. And basically the amount of money they have to give the basic species across our country, coast to coast to coast, not just right money, but all of our invasive It's really a drop in the bucket what's required. So um, I don't usually get, I'm never, I have yet to be successful in getting some funds for this, but um, Anyway, Jeff's been very successful in getting some funds eventually. <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah. Um, so my, my thing is, that what we need really is, is um, province-wide, and again, this is something that caught has been working with, a province-wide approach. Because you don't just have freight monies in all forms. It's down the beach, up the beach. It's on your roads. It's on the Huron, Erie, Ontario. It's everywhere. So uh, we all we need a, a concerted effort to try and control this. Um, and I think we're, we're getting there. Um, we're not there yet, but we're getting there. The other thing I think we really should have is this Fred Mighty's technical team. You know, Jeff and I kind of we work together and, and, and work together with some other people. And we go into these sensitive habitats and kind of come up with a game plan on things to be controlled. Um, but we're doing this on our own time, or you know, as an aside to what our real jobs are. I think we need a core group that's able to, to do this and support it with some funds so they can offset the cost. Well, say an organization like yourself will come up with half of the cost, and then this group is able to kick in the next half, uh, the other uh, half, and then provide, provide some guidance on how to proceed with controlling in your particular system, because every system is different and dictates different approach. 